Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight for our free webinar, Pragmatic Applications of Japanese Moxa, featuring Dr. Cameron Bishop. My name is Jeff Bloom, Education Marketing Manager here at LASA OMS. For over 40 years, LASA OMS has been striving to promote the growth of the acupuncture industry by providing quality products, great prices, and the best customer service, as well as supporting the many schools and continuing education efforts available. With our free webinar series, we intend to provide free educational opportunities taught by some of our industry's most renowned practitioners and educators. I would like to take a moment to acclimate you to the webinar room. To the right of the video screen, you will see three tabs, chat, questions, and polls. To chat with other attendees or to communicate any technical difficulties, please use the chat tab. For questions of the guest speaker, please use the questions tab to the right of the chat tab to assure that we see it during the Q&A, which will be done after the lecture. And please note that each webinar is recorded and immediately following the conclusion, you will all receive an email with a link to view the video on demand, as well as a copy of the slides. You may always visit our, our blog and use the free webinar tag to find all of our previously recorded events from sports acupuncture to Chinese herbs to practice management, you'll find something interesting for every practitioner on the LASA OMS blog. Now for our featured speaker, we are proud to introduce Dr. Cameron Bishop. Dr. Bishop has lived and studied in Japan, China, and the USA. He graduated from NIAOM and ACTC. He teaches Japanese acupuncture and TCMGYN for ATOM and the PCHS DACM program. He has been practicing and teaching in South Florida for over 20 years. You can learn more about him and his course offerings at his website, which is askwithin.com. And you can also check him out as one of the featured speakers at the 2020 Pacific Symposium, which is coming up in just a few short weeks. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Cameron Bishop. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Lahaso OMS, for this opportunity. And thank you for all your support to acupuncture schools uh, I could always count on Lahas OMS giving us some MOXA samples for our students, so we really appreciate this. So welcome to Practical Japanese Acupuncture. Here's a pretty picture from Japan. It's uh, Inoshima Island, and that's where Sugoyama Sensei is buried, and he is the father of Japanese meridian therapy, or Keiraku Chiro. So it's a pretty picture. So most of the pho photographs in this are from my photography. So this is me and my famous bear, and uh, you'll probably be interested in his Instagram, which is Bearable Life. My photography is at Cameron Loves Life, um, and Ask Within Acupuncture is my acupuncture site. There's lots of memes there for acupuncture. Feel free to steal, steal them and uh, use them to build up your business, and my email and my website's there. So welcome to this class. The the photography in the class, I took most of the pictures and I broke my poor interns and uh, students into the photos. And the videos, we did two videos, they're not as good as I would like, but we shot them at home during the pandemic. So I wasn't able to use an office and a proper table, things like that. But I think they get the job done. And although we'll talk a little bit about different types of moxa, our main focus is a buki moxa or chimney moxa, and we'll talk about that. So some pictures I may be talking about Ibuki Moxa, but there'll be a picture of a different type of Moxa. But I'll tell you when uh, you could use either or. But I thought I'd keep it simple and easy, so it's just an hour or so, and talk about Ibuki Moxa. But we'll go over a little bit of the different stuff in here. So basically, uh, introduce you briefly to Moxa, and then we'll talk about specific points and specific conditions. The nature of my classes is I love it to be practical and that you can bring it immediately into practice. And then we'll have a question and answer time. Here's a pretty picture of sunrise over the Atlantic Ocean at Vero Beach, Florida. So what is Moxa? So Moxa is a Japanese word, Mokusa, and it literally is two characters uh, and it means burning, burning weed. It's a punk or wool from the leaves of Bartimaeus vulgaris. It's commonly known as mugwort. It's in the daisy family. It has, uh, there's uh, two to 400 different species in the daisy family. It's related to sage and wormwood. Traveled from missionaries all over the world and families use it routinely in Japan. And actually in Japan, you can get a separate license in Matsubushin use. 
And most acupuncturists get that license or a family member does to help them. So it is a separate license, which is different from the United States. Also in pharmacies, you can buy it. And what's commonly sold in pharmacies is the abuki, which we'll talk about in a minute. So moxibustions feel they can treat anything, any condition. Research, if you research moxibustion, there's about uh, over 300, 360 different conditions it's known to treat and the research. But moxibustionists feel you can treat any condition if you have the proper dosage of the moxa, the proper point location, and that could treat anything. So for example, even something like night sweats or hot flashes, you, if you do the right point in the right way, you can treat it. So how moxa works briefly, and there's a lot of research on it, is there's thermal effect, radiation effect, and pharmacological actions, but that's beyond the scope of this class. Here's a pretty picture I took in Japan. It's at a uh, conference in Japan. And I like this because it shows the different qualities of moxa. The lower right, if you can look closely, you'll see it has stems in it and pieces of leaves and things like that in it. So it's a lower quality and it's darker. And if you go to the upper left, that's a higher quality of moxa and that's used for more finer moxas. So the bottom right is the lowest going over and then the next section would be the far upper right and then all the way over. So those are the two uh, the various types of moxa. So the lower right one might be used in a moxa box or something like that. And it uh, might even be put into a pole. So uh, moxa, there's uh, four different types we'll briefly talk about, and then we'll go into detail with uh, ibuki. So that's uh, choseku moxa. So the first one is Oku moxa. It's also known as thread moxa. The character is Oku, which is honorable moxa. And the second one is Kyutoshin, which is moxa and needle. And the third one is Chinetsuku. We commonly call it cone moxa, but the characters are sense the heat moxa. And the last one is Ibuki, and we call that chimney moxa or stick on moxa. So that's the easy one to use. So OQ moxa or thread moxa is used on any point. It uh, is used in a, uh, you roll it with a case or something and or roll it between two cards. You can roll it with your thumb on a table. There's all kinds of things. And our focus really isn't on this, but it can be used anywhere on the body. And uh, acupuncturist and moxipness in Japan commonly use it. So this is Kyutoshin, that's needle and moxa. It can be used anywhere on the body. This is being used for Morton's neuroma. So if you have a Morton's neuroma and you have enough web space and uh, space between the ligaments, it's very effective. But more commonly, it's used on like stomach 36 real deep for immune effects, uh, meaning you put the needle in deep, that's one technique, or you can use it on back shoe points or you can use it on trigger points. That's a pretty uh, useful one. Uh, a couple other good places it's for is um, REN points, like REN6, st uh, stomach 25, uh, REN9, 10 or 12, and these points are used to build a constitution. But we could use the buki for that too. So Chinetsky is cone moxa. And these, you use a little bit of uh, moxa, kakusa moxa, and it's in your notes what to use. And you can just basically kind of roll it and make a little cone. Different sizes are the dose. You can make it thick or thin. And I recommend if you're gonna use that, use one at a time, light one at a time. Of course, you wanna be ready with uh, your, your um, tweezers or no fear to pick it up and a place to extinguish it. You wanna be all ready. So definitely light one at a time for safety. Some people are using the leftovers and lighting them and putting them in the toilet and sitting down and putting a towel over themselves for moxa treatments for uh, their body. So that's a unique use of it. Generally, when you're using this, you let it light uh, burn about halfway down. There's a lot of different thoughts on that. Some people will take the pulse and wait for the pulse to improve and then take it off. Some people burn it down halfway. 
some people feel if you let it burn down even farther, it's more dispersion. And if it's just kind of uh, a little bit, you're more of a tonification or supplement, supplementation technique. This can be used on most points in lieu of thread moxa. And also you can insert a needle and put this next to the needle to enhance the needles act for pain or other things. It's also good for bruises. So if you bruise someone with a, with a, with the needle or they get a bruise for some other reason, on top of it helps disperse the bruise quicker. Uh, in Florida, we have fire ants. So if you ever step on a fire ant and get bit, uh, moxa is a great treatment for that and mosquito bites, pulls the heat right out. So it's a pretty fun way. Uh, it's also good for lumps. Any lumps on the body disperses the pain in the body. Another good treatment with uh, uh, the Chinetsky or cone moxa is to use a large piece in Ren 8 or the belly button for diarrhea. And that really uh, sets it all up. So those are good uses for it. Uh, Chinetsky is really good on the belly, uh, especially after an emotional upset. If somebody had, you know, top five emotional uh, upset, you know, that break up, a death in the family, something like that. Sometimes needles are too strong. And a lot of moxa will just kind of bring them back into their body. And moxa is related to sage. So some people kind of feel that it kind of cleans, cleans the field, if you will. It's also good for, if for people are weak, very weak, and needles are too strong. So moxa can sometimes be good, light moxa. So this is a buki, and there are four major types of Choseku Moxa. There's many different types of brands. This is the one I use, conveniently available from La Haas OMS. So there's light, regular, and soft, and fruit. And I mostly use the uh, light, and I use the soft. The fruit's kind of nice, has a different smell, and sometimes I use the regular. But the soft is very good for children and the face. And the light is safe to use with patients. I only use uh, regular if I'm doing it on the patient. And you might think of it as more dispersing. It just depends on how you use it. The bottom little thing is the Japanese for that. They call it uh, soft, softo, lighto, regular, and hardo. So how to light. So we're going to talk about safety and things like that. Um, this is a picture of thread moxa on a Jing well point, but you can use an abuki on these points too. Uh, a great use of abuki is on uh, some of the Jing well points. We'll talk about that in a minute. So basically, if you're going to light an abuki or thread moxa with a incense, one of the things you want to do is be able to, before you're over the skin, is to flick off the incense um, ash. So for safety, you don't want to do it over the patient because you don't want the moxa, the incense to break and fall on them, or you don't want the ash to fall on them. And then when you light it, the key is if this is the uh, ibuki, if this is the ibuki, or if this is the um, thread moxa or the cone, but when you light it with that, you want to roll your thing. So you're rolling the incense. If you do this, it'll stick to it and it'll go with you when you pull it off. So the key is to roll the moxa, roll it across and to light it. You can also use a lighter, but if you use a lighter, you need to tell the patient you're using a lighter. Because if all of a sudden they hear a lighter go off, they may jump, get scared or something like that. And the other safety thing with a lighter, which I really use too much, is you don't point it to the person and light it. You light it away, and then you bring it in. So that's what you do. But what I've been doing lately is an electric lighter. And these are really handy. You can get them uh, really easy. And they charge with a cell phone charger. And they're really safe and easy. And they light things quick. So you also want to have your tweezers ready and water or however you're going to extinguish it. Another thing, uh, always we have to be careful in Florida is fans. We have fans overhead. You want your fans off and your air conditioner not blowing on that. So Jeffrey's going to show a short video on how to safely light in a bee. 
For safety, some people light it off the body. If the angle is like this, when you're putting it on the body, it's going to have less heat. But if it's sideways, it's going to have much more heat on the body. Angle. When you light it, you can light it any way. And then place it on the person's body carefully. If you're using it on the face, you, you want, want this to burn, burn all the way down before, before you place it, it on anywhere below the nose because the smoke can irritate the patient. Thank you, Jeffrey. So um, basically with the moxa, if it's lit like that, it's the regular temperature. But if you're putting it at any angle, it's gonna be burning hotter. And with the face, again, uh, you may light it up here, put it here, and then let it burn halfway down or more before you move it anywhere below the nose. You also want to be careful with the uh, air, with the um, the smoke going into the nose, sneezing, things like the talking and stuff like that. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So again, uh, electric lighters are safe, quiet, smokeless, rechargeable. Uh, lighting off the body, uh, patient's body is the safest. Light it on your thumb or something, light it, then put it on. Sometimes lighting the edge of the white paper on both sides is the most effective, depending on what kind of lighter you have. Some of them have bigger uh, areas and, than others. Uh, keep out of reach of children, so be careful if there's children in the clinic. And like I said, horizontal ibuki burns uh, normal, angled ibuki burns hotter. And please press the moxa of the ibuki firmly the skin and avoid hair. Uh, hair often, um, once the heat hits, it starts to raise up sometimes and can knock it over. So this is uh, face moxa or ibuki. So moxa soft has no hole in the bottom. So the cardboard at the base is thicker and moxa soft is pink and it looks a little bit different. So it's got a bottom and the case, the base is much thicker. And also the other thing with it is if you tear this off, there's no hole. On this side, you can see a little hole, but there's no hole. So the moxa can never directly touch the skin. Burning someone's face is bad for business. And knock on wood, haven't done it. So uh, the greater the angle, the hotter the moxa will be felt again. Use mostly burnt moxa below the nose. Smoke is, di is diminished. And the smoke may cause a safety issue. Instruct a patient not to move. Uh, you could put towels on both sides of their head to help them to remember. Ask them not to talk. Ask them to raise their hand if they feel something too hot so they don't have to talk. And ibuki is easily, easiest to remove by twisting it slowly. So if this is the ibuki and you twist it, there's the ibuki, twist it. Yes, I voted. So you twist it and then lift it off. That's the easiest way to get it off while other than trying to tuck it off like that. And again, mox over hair may um, make the hair rise and topple the moxa. So I think we have a video for uh, face moxa. Go ahead, Free. This is moxa soft. It's a little bit different from the regular moxa. It has the pink sides, while regular has the over. It has a little more cardboard on the bottom, and it doesn't have a complete hole through it like the silver does which means that moxa never directly can touch the skin. To light, we basically put it on our fingertip or on a surface and light it. This is electrical lighter. Or we can do it on our fingertip. We tell the patient we're gonna put it on and since these are newly lit, they go better on the upper part of the head. 
if we put them anywhere on top of hair, no, no matter where it is on the body, what happens is the hair can rise and knock it over. This moxa here is on a flatter surface, so it will burn cooler. Any moxa on an angle like this or the side of the face will burn hotter, up to 15% hotter. Anything below the nose, we don't want to have a fully lit moxa. We want to wait till it burns way down. To take the moxa off, we just simply twist it like that. And then we put it down. I like to use this little case, it was for Sencha, and it works real well. I usually never put lit ones in like that, but I'm illustrating. This one is mostly burnt down, and we can put it on the face now, or the chin, or somewhere else like that. We want to be careful because it can fall off easier, if particularly if the face has oil on it, and also it can annoy the patient's nose. The smoke can go up their nose and cause a sneeze or whatever else. If you have to, you may block it with this or with a moxa spoon so that the, the smoke is going not into their nose. Again, to get it off, you simply twist like this. Hi, Dr. Bishop. So we actually muted you. Um, if you look on the bottom, you should have a little microphone. And if you click on that, um, that will allow you to speak again. Okay. Perfect. All right, I'm gone. Thanks. Okay. So um, just need the PowerPoint back. So I rarely use moxa below the nose. If I do, I use it for um, a toothache. They have a distinct thing right there. We're not dentists, but sometimes I can help them get through the weekend before their dentist opens up. And mostly I use it for eye strain, the Yu Yao, you know, this type of point, and Yin Tong for calming, and gallbladder 14 for emotions. Uh, also, if they're prone to night sweats or hot flashes, you can add in Ibuki, the LI4, LI11, this type of thing. Also, mental fatigue, eye strain, things like that. But it's very strongly used for Bell's palsy. And the easiest way, way to do with Bell's palsy is you put them on their side. So you put them lateral and incumbent like this. And this is the affected side. And that way you can actually know that the heat's not too much and they may have numbness, so you want to be careful. So you can put them on their side like that and burn them. It doesn't work so great on penguins because of the fur, but... Uh, and then you can palpate them that way and also the smoke won't irritate them and do all the places uh, for Bell's palsy. So that's a great, great way of doing it. So let's talk about moxa safety. So one of the leading lawsuits against acupuncturists is moxa burns. Your malpractice insurance may not cover using moxa. You may wanna check that. Uh, this class has information on practice safety uh, but uh, always err on the side of caution. In Japan, they would do things like burning moxa and things like that, but I strongly do not recommend do that in the States, uh, and I don't believe anyone's doing it. Uh, be careful not to use on anyone that cannot vocalize or will not vocalize a sensation of pain and burning, uh, dementia, autism, unconscious, small children, babies, diabetics, heavily medicated, uh, they fell asleep during the treatment, uh, maybe drunk, <laughs> that type of thing. Be careful uh, or do not treat the extremities of diabetics, particularly their feet. Diabetics heal slower. Uh, be careful with anyone who's immune compromised. Be careful with people on immune suppressant drugs, pain medication, blood thinners, particularly those on multiple medications that may thin blood, uh, uh, the skin, and suppress uh, pain and feeling. So there's been some interesting cases. There's uh, quite a few medications that do cause numbness in the extremities. And there's been a couple cases of severe moxa burns from people on Lyrica, gabapentin, and combinations of these drugs. So 
Sometimes these are not in the literature or they're rare complications of these medications. You can Google and find a whole list of medications that cause neuropathy in the extremities. Most of these cases have been on the feet. So just so you know, the best way with medications to find out an, an obscure type of um, side effect is to look at uh, support boards. So um, make up fibromyalgia support board and you get in contact with them and find out if they have, you know, a hundred people out of their 10,000 people on that board reporting some, you know, unusual side effect that is not in the medical literature. So that's one way to get it down. Um, so make sure that you tell the paper, the, pa the patient to tell you if they feel any warmth or heat. Some people are reluctant to be vocal. Uh, when using the MOXA stip, use the V-stip with your V-shape with your finger so you can sense heat. And blistering is rare, but sometimes it can show up hours later. Be careful with hot ash or burning pieces as they may cause your clinic uh, to burn to the ground or burn your patient's skin or hair. Never throw MOXA in the trash. Always be ready to extinguish MOXA. Have a glass of water and tweezers always nearby. Have everything ready first. Uh, discard use moxa daily from the treatment room it's uh, it's thought of in japan it's not it's not good uh, energy to keep around so every day dump it um, doesn't flush well down the toilet but it goes well in the garden so and again some medications reduce sensitivity and the patient can report they are being burned and they may show uh, blisters later so just always err on the side of caution some shampoos, particularly dandruff shampoos, can also cause more thinning of the skin as they're made to kind of take a layer of the skin out. And skin peels for the face, uh, some uh, abrasive type of uh, cleansers and stuff will reduce the layer of the skin and can create more sensitivity and things. So once at home, uh, if you're going to send patients home, I rarely do it. And if I do it, I know the person well. They're usually a massage therapist or have some type of uh, hands-on experience. I don't really do this often, but I use the better um, MOXA poles if I do. But uh, if you really want to do it the most, the safest, what I would do is uh, have them sign a liability thing uh, sign a form that you trained them and teach them. And again, like this lady here, I taught her to do it on her husband and she was a massage therapist. So I taught her to use her pinky so she could not ever touch it. So he couldn't suddenly move his foot and burn himself by accident. And also to use her other hand to feel the warmth of the moxa. So she, we had multiple ways of protection and safety. So more and more people, even though in Japan it's normal for an acupuncturist or a to give moxa homework, go home, mark these points, do these every day. Uh, you want to do it at your own risk. Um, some people, because of telemedicine, are sending moxa to people and instructing them with ibuki, what to do over the internet. So, you know, uh, not only the root treatments, but also symptom treatments or extraordinary vessel treatments. So, you know, that's, that's how your comfort level at doing that. So, Hara points, we're going to go in some points that work really well. Um, so the Hara points, uh, these are points uh, in several systems that you do daily to build your blood, to build your chi. And they're generally REN6, REN12, and stomach 25 bilateral. Some people look for any deficient area on the abdomen. Some people, before they get out of bed, they burn some moxa on their REN6, that type of thing. So those are good points. REN2 is a great point for a bladder and prostate problems. It's pretty much REN2 to that kidney 11 area. If you feel any um, uh, like hardness along the pubic bone, those are good points. You can use needle and moxa. You can use the abuki. You can use the thread moxa. You can use any of them. And as that hard spot soften, uh, the prostate problems will get better. 
uh, bladder pro problems will uh, inc get better too. So kidney 13 is a major fertility point for cold uterus, irregular periods, and damps. It's another point you can moxa. Uh, emotional stabilizing points we talked about a little bit earlier after a big shock at our emotional upset or grief um, for treatments that aren't going well. Uh, those are great points. And both, basically, those are all the REN6, REN12, stomach 25 type of points. Center of the C's point. This is uh, three soon lateral to REN6. It's for irregular periods. Now, the moxibustionists had their own points. And sometimes they had different names for the same points. So it was kind of interesting. And there is some evidence that a lot of acupuncture theory came out of moxibustion theory, but that's another discussion. It's also the irregular moon point. It's one soon lateral to kidney 14. It's for irregular periods from the stagnation of chi and blood. Some people also use REN9 for stomach problems and REN9 for uh, when they can't process emotions. That's one. REN12 for ulcers and stomach problems also with MUXA. We'll talk a little bit about the fertility points. The old idea of Zigong or the women, uh, the child's palace, you need it to be warm and happy and full of good nutrition. So you do the Zigong points. Uh, I get a lot of uh, digotic twins, fraternal twins, when if you're using those both sides sometimes. Um, seems to make more twins, uh, fraternal twins. Uh, Hoffman is another point. It's too soon lateral to REN4. It's the right side is child door moxa point. It's a moxa bushman point. You can put a lot of moxa in that area. And they say it corresponds to the fallopian tube, but it in, it's for a fertility point also. In IVF stuff, uh, what enhances IVF is spleen four and P6 with moxa. So you do uh, more cones on the spleen four and contralateral, and that's effective too. These are the eyes of the hips, the sacrum points. So even though this is a picture in Japan and he's lighting them all at once, I recommend you only make one at a time. And for older people that are just uh, a little too weak. Sometimes the best treatment is moxa to the back, just lots of moxa to the back, and it's more effective than a lot of needles. So it also brings chi to the area, and you can see the creases come up, the deficient areas strengthen, and you know their back will get better. You can also go along the the Watawaji's points and find hard spots and release those. Releasing those is good for back pain, also fertility issues, and uh, constitution generally. These are back shoe points um, used for constitutional treatments. It's possibly used to direct chemo to the organs. There's a little bit of research that uh, if you had, for example, liver cancer, that they put chemo in, do moxa over the back shoe for the liver, UB18, and it's more of the chemo goes there. It's kind of interesting research, see how, how that pans out in the future. But generally, we're using it just like we would for the Hara to look for deficient spots and strengthen the back. It's used to build the chi and blood. It's used for pain. And it's used by theory um, or by just picking deficient points. Hip pain. This is Kutoshin, but you could also use the Ibuki on there or other moxas. And this is a very effective on the greater trochanter. You, you find the most tender spot or uh, spots on the IT band, you can uh, put the uh, mox in there. And this one is particularly very effective for that uh, bursitis pain. Uh, when you do, don't forget when you light the moxa, uh, if you're using needle moxa, light it from the bottom. And of course, uh, the safest is to use the Yibuki, and you can also do kind of a surround the dragon on that tender spot too. And you can combine that with the low pain because usually, you know, they're going hand in hand. These are knee points in the middle of the patella is the knee point, uh, the middle of the knee point, they call it. And it's the very effective for any type of knee pain. And if you feel the patella, um, you're gonna find right in the middle of the patella a, a tender spot. 
and or a little dip. And that's a great place. You could use thread moxa there, the cone moxa, the abuki, and things like that. You can also do the surround the dragon that you see in the picture on the left, or you can do the cone on the top on the right. You can also uh, burn with thread or needle and moxa or the abuki two sides of the joint. So it's going to be going both sides of the joint of the knee at the same time, and you light them at the same time, and they, the the uh, moxa uh, photo energy goes together inside the joint. So that's effective too. Stomach 36, you know, the we've all heard all these things. You never travel with someone who's not burning moxa on stomach 36, and a needle gives a request, and moxa gives a command, and where a needle fails, moxa will succeed, you know, all these things from the classics. And so um, stomach 36 is a very powerful point. There are a lot of different ideas about it. There are groups that do it daily. So it's one of the most important points for building blood for chemotherapy. I've had many patients where their blood counts aren't good enough for chemotherapy. And we do some moxa, a couple of treatments in a row, and then their points, their blood counts are better so they can get their chemotherapy. It's an important point, as we all know, for building energy, immunity, and anti-cancer. There's a lot of studies on it out in Asia. Uh, also, there's different ways of doing it. Some people will say seven cones daily. Some people will say do it after the new moon, do it for eight days. My uh, pandemic roommate and I or do the new moon moxa. So at the new moon, we start doing Ibuki moxa on stomach 36 and kind of wood. we've been fine. Uh, another way of doing it is to do a deep needle in moxa. So you put a needle in deep and then light a moxa and do that 10 days in a row. So it's another way to build your immunity. Kidney one is, of course, a famous point for many things. It brings the yang down from the from the head. It dispels wind. It's good for anxiety. It grounds the person. It's good for counterflow chi. Uh, also, the middle of the heel point, which is in the middle of the heel, is a great point for any leg pain, any swelling in the leg, any type of pain in the leg. It's also good for um, possibly uh, brain tumors. And so that's kind of an interesting application. And it's also good for dampness and grounding the people. So using those two points often is just excellent for bringing someone down into the body and stuff. Also with stone bruises, we get a lot of uh, um, stone bruises on the beach, you're walking barefoot and you hit a stone and it bruises the bottom of your foot and you can use mox over that. It's very effective and much gentler than a uh, needle. Also, depending on how thick the person's sole is, if they have office feet very soft, you can use a little bit of moxa. But if they're a you know, regular no-shoe person, then uh, you might need bigger moxa, more burn down more to get the same effect. These are well points. Uh, they're traditional in Japanese locations. Um, so on the right, uh, we have our traditional location, but really basically you can use a tool to find the most tender point. And that could be the traditional point, or you can go more up the toe towards the foot, or you can go across to the middle and even on top of the big toe. Spleen one's great for menstrual bleeding to stop it, macular bleeding, sugar cravings. If you have a patient with a lot of sugar craving problems, you can come home with the abuki, and that really helps. I would, I would recommend the abuki soft, so no problems. It's a ghost point. I don't know if you remember in school that the whole thing, you had the two big toes together and you put the moxa on the both spleen ones at the same time. So I don't plan on tying any of my toes, patients' toes together. But uh, it's good for anxiety, insomnia, bad dreams, nightmares, and th things like that. It's also effective for headaches. Liver one, we call the hangover point. Uh, it's good for hangovers. It gets the liver moving. Good for menstrual bleeding also, for emotional problems and headaches. Uh, I'm gonna bounce up here for a second, go back. So two more points at the tip of these toes are the moving the liver moxa point. That's a famous point, but it also harmonizes the liver and spleen. 
and the other point to look for tenderness for some of the conditions I mentioned in the last slide. And the nausea points on the top of the stomach toe, the number two toe, and it's right in the middle of, between the two Qing well points. So that's uh, very good for nausea. So uh, Achilles point is found in the notch of the Achilles. Another way of finding it is to cup the hand on the heel and then where your finger drops will be there. But you can also feel along the Achilles and find a little notch there. That point's great for gynecological problems, headaches, and releases the neck. Also, if they have Achilles tendonitis, you can use mox on both sides of the tendon. And uh, uh, that's very effective, especially if you find a really juicy little hard spot. On the right is uh, stomach 44, which is you traditional thing is you bend the toe over and find it. I find that's kind of useless. But I just feel for the most tender spot underneath there in that general area, and you'll find a little crunchy spot and put needles in there. It's for nausea, vertigo, uh, unilateral headache, but it's also famous for food poisoning, but you have to do a lot of it to be effective. Actually, the nausea point on top of the toe, the second toe is to be quicker and faster than that one, in my opinion. That one. So a couple other points are, uh, this is the ones that will make you famous. Um, kidney two, spleen two, kidney five. If someone has a sore throat, they come in, particularly if it's the first you know, 24 hours. And you get a little show and say, hey, where does it hurt? Swallow. And they'll say, oh, it hurts here. And if it's more in the center of the throat, then that's more of a kidney point. You look for kidney two or kidney five or a tender point in the, in the heel on the kidney channel. And if it's more of the spleen, it'll be an outer one. So you look at some two points and then you burn moxa there, do a couple, then have them swallow again. And 99% of the time, it's much better. So you do a few moxas, and they're like, oh, my God, it's so much better. And I can't think of a case where I got someone and did those points, and it was when they're just coming down with it. This isn't a couple of days later. That didn't knock it right out. So those are some of the miracle ones, and the patients immediately see a difference. All right, so I think we're at our end. So this is my famous bear. And uh, let me look at my notes, see if I missed anything. Okay, I think I got everything. So Jeffrey, I think we could do a couple of questions if you want. All right, well, thank you so much. I just wanna thank you because that was a really, really incredible class and we have a lot of questions, so I won't waste any time um, getting to them. So uh, somebody did want to know what the red dot was in the bottom of the cone in the Moxa picture. Um, that was pretty much right at the beginning of the webinar. I believe it was the fire. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Let's go look. All right. It would have been in the first image of Moxa. Look away. It'll make you dizzy. <laughs> it actually went so fast, I didn't even see it move. Uh, next one. Let's see. Next one. Next one. That one. So, yeah. Oh, that's that. It's lit on fire. All right. Yeah. So, it's on fire. So, that's kind of just illustrating you only light one at a time. And then right after the that right after the question, somebody had asked, you mentioned lumps. Can you use for fatty tissue? Oh, I don't know. Get rid of fat. Um, I've used it on oh, like on the on the the sole of the foot. You get in the 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 now I'm losing the word, but you get this uh, kind of lump in the in the uh, tendon there. I use it on that. I use it on lumps anywhere on the body, the belly. Now, I don't know if it's like adipose pit tissue, but it is fatty uh, lymphomas I use it on. And it will make them shrink, but it, they won't go away completely unless they're much smaller. But if they have pain or discomfort, it kind of disperses that pain and discomfort. All right. Um, can Moxa be used in REN8 for diarrhea post chemotherapy? I don't see why not, as long as the, the doctor approves it. And I've actually created kind of caused constipation by using REN8. So it is a strong treatment. 
All right, somebody did ask, I'll answer this one. Somebody asked if there will be notes available. And yes, all of you will receive an email five minutes after we end with a link to view the slides. You'll also be able to watch the recording. And also that link was also in the emails leading up to the webinar as well. So you actually already have it. Um, and then next question, having never had an office with a window or good air exchange, developed a pretty good cough from the moxa smoke after seven years and therefore stopped using it. Are there any really useful, truly smokeless moxas that can be used that do, do not give a gas smelling like charcoal? I just never have used smokeless moxa. Uh, the Ibuki fruit one is uh, much more tolerable uh, than the other ones. I, on purpose, bought my own building and I can open all the windows. And I had air cleaners in there and stuff, but I had that luxury um, so, but yeah, you can get moxa doubt and I do have days where I'm just over the moxa. That's for sure. All right. Uh, one, next one, question. One way around it though, is to get really good at thread moxa because thread moxa you're using a lot less and uh, you're not going to, it's a better quality and things like that. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Somebody actually wanted to know, where would you buy that electric lighter? Amazon. <laughs> but do, does the La Hasa OMS have some? Uh, we don't have an electric lighter. Um, and actually, I believe the Moxa starter we have was butane, and it may or may not be out of stock, but I can look into that. But now that we've seen this electric lighter, I will be sharing that with our merchandise team, and hopefully that can be an addition for the near future. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I love it. Yeah. It looks like a great tool. Yeah, I'm never going back to lighter again. <laughs> All right. Ooh, good question. Next one. Um, I thought most point in the head are contraindicated for moxa. So many people have a flux. It seems strange to bring heat to the heat. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a herbal thinking. Now, I don't. In Japan, they would do a lot of moxa on do 23 for allergies or do 20 for anxiety. So the I do 20 will uh, work on the opposite and it is effective, but I would never do it in my practice in America because it's America. But I it do 23 and do 20 are extremely effective for those conditions. And also if they for cranial sacral, if you find a real, you know, bad spot that just won't move to moxa there, I would do it on my, uh, you know, acupuncture buddy, but I wouldn't do it on a regular patient. All right. Uh, next question. Is there any info on moxa on lymphedema patients? Um, not that I know of. That's a good research subject. Uh, I know people use spleen nine with needle and moxa. So I do know that. All right. Uh, let's see. Can Ibuki or Chinatsa Q be used on the breast area of a mastectomy patient? I'm looking to move lymph as well as to assist healing from surgery and scar. Uh, that's a great question. I don't do that type of work. I usually refer them to a female physical therapist, but there are lots of scar type of treatments using needle and moxa, and you're making the health of the uh, scars better. And I've certainly done that post cesarean and that's one thing after cesarean, uh, as soon as they heal up, lots of moxa. Lots of moxa on that scar will lit up and change how it shapes. So I've done a lot of post-surgical. Moxa after surgery is just great. Uh, obviously not in the wound. And, uh, but uh, actually I actually had a kid that had a brittle bone disease and had just long scars and we worked on him and he's about 12, 13 and it was extremely effective. Kind of seals the point, just the chi leaking if you will. Very interesting. Um, and then somebody asked if you have an example of a liability form. I do not. I thought I knew somebody was going to ask, um, <laughs> but I actually don't. I oh, don't my. do it. I don't have a liability form, but I just know some people do and probably a smart idea. I'm kind of in semi-retirement anyway, so my only patients I have are existing patients for, you know, years. 
All right, well, I do know that um, companies like American Acupuncture Council, they do offer consent forms and could possibly advise you on that. So if they're your malpractice coverage or you know, check into whoever you do get your coverage from. Right. Uh, let's see, next question. How do you protect the patient from the moxa falling out of the needle basket? And I think that's with the, um, with the needle moxa, not the uh, Chosy Q. Right, um, so there's a lot of ways to put the uh, moxa on there. So there's a few things to do. I've never burned it, knock on wood. It's never dropped. And basically, when you take a needle, if this is not a needle, some people will just push it on, but another way is to open up a little bit so there's a little bit of a hole and put it on the needle. And then, I don't know if it's gonna hold, but <laughs> and then put it uh, together. And um, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> One thing is you don't want the, these things on the side. You want it perfectly round because you don't want those little pieces, but you test it. See, that wasn't gonna work. So you test it by pressing on it and you light it from the bottom. So when you light it from the bottom, what's gonna happen is if this is the moxa, you light it from the bottom here and it'll burn up. People make the mistake of lighting it from the top and then it splits apart and falls. The second thing you use your handy Lahasa OMS <laughs> moxa spoon and see it has a slit there. So you can always be there and ready with it. You could also shield it if it gets too warm on one side and you're just ready to take the moxa right off with it. All so right. that's what you can do impromptu. But basically it's just being really mindful and, and take and push, you know, having the needle deep enough, not at an angle, that it's at, not at an angle, it's up and down. You make sure it's very clump, you test it, light it on the bottom, and then you have your moxa spoon ready. All right, let's see, still tons of questions. Uh, so you mentioned using for prostate issues at R2, does that include prostate cancer or would that be contraindicated? And would stomach 36 be okay during radiation? Yeah, I do stomach 36 uh, during uh, radiation for sure. REN2, I have, I have a few cancer, uh, prostate cancer patients, and there were unusual prostate cancers, and the doctor said basically we have nothing but to observe you and to get regular scans. And they had very strong deficient findings in their lower jaw, REN2, REN3, that kidney all through there, uh, cold, wet, um, or cold and and just um, uh, depressed. Skin was flaccid. Just you know, not a good strong chi there. So you know, and I talked to these patients. I said, look, this is what I got. You know, and I explained explained it in our terms. And they said, well, I got no other option. So you know, these guys are still alive five, seven years later. And all we did was mox on the lower jowl and just the basic treatments. You know, Miriam Lee points, LI4, you know, stomach 36, kidney 3, liver 3, just basic points. And their cancer just froze where it was and it didn't progress. All right. How are you doing? Are you okay to answer a couple more questions? Yeah. All right. So we have more and they're all really good. Uh, so somebody wanted to understand this kind of piggybacking on Helene's question about the smoke bothering her. Um, is there any research from Japan or elsewhere on the occupational hazards to moxibustionists? Not that I know of, but uh, I, I personally would never use the moxa poles in my clinic. And if I did, I'd use the Korean ones that Lahasa OMS does, the Huan 9. And I've always had a cleaner and the ability to open my windows. And I use very high quality moxa. I always use the wakakusa for the cone moxa. And I use the uh, superior and then the abuki. And if I do moxa at home, I go outside on my balcony and stuff. All right, uh, let's see. Do you recommend self-warming moxa for patients to use at home? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. 
Okay, yeah, there used to be, we used to carry these products where you'd like almost shake them like those little heat packs that you'd put them in like your pockets. Mm -hmm. And then the, the shaking of it would, you know, activate the warming of it and it would warm up the inside of the pack. I'm right. guessing that's what she's referring to. Yeah, there's a um, lot of mechanisms with uh, Moxa, but one of them is the, the heat, the chemicals, and, but you know, a hair dryer can work in a pinch. And uh, I've used that, you know, in a hotel room where you just kind of bring the hair dryer in and just get a little bit of a sting. Now, I don't know if that's smart to tell a patient to do that or to use on a patient, but in a pinch, you know, hair dryer can work. And actually in Japan, you know, I've heard, I've had students tell me that their, you know, Chinese grandfather would use cigarettes. Wow. And uh, use the cigarettes uh, close to the points. And, and you know, this is, 80 years ago, but that's what they used. Interesting. I'm not recommending that. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. Well, the US um, has a 75 year low of uh, smoking. 15% yeah. of Americans smoke right now. Same number that smoke marijuana too. Interesting, use marijuana, I should say. Interesting. Um, let's see, next question. How long does it take to burn an Ibuki Moxa? If we were to burn three or five cones, I have been using pipe Moxa, which takes about five minutes per stick. Oh, interesting. I don't know how long the Ibuki is. It seems to be like a minute or less. Yeah, I never right. thought they, to time it. Yeah. yeah, they do They do burn down pretty quickly. And I mean, in the demo video that you showed, it was only about a minute long and that burnt down pretty, pretty far, correct? Yeah. All right, um, let's move on to the next question. Um, so the big cones are put directly on the skin. I have only done them over ginger slices. Do you only burn it halfway to avoid burning the patient? Right, there's a lot of different thinking of it. The, the idiot's rule, if you will, is halfway down. And that might be more supplementing if it goes a little bit more and they can feel the heat that's supplementing, but if it goes a little bit more and they really feel the heat, then that's dispersing. Uh, but you have to be in touch with your patient. I feel the pulse a lot of times, and as it goes down, the pulse improves, and then I take it off then. So there's different ideas and thoughts on it. I kind of, personally, I feel it in my hara. I just, oh, that's the right amount. So I can't really explain that, but that's what's happened in my old age. All right. Oh, um, another, another thing, sorry, Jeffrey, is that uh, some people use shunko, which is like a, a herbal paste on there, and then put the moxa on. And I don't really use that too much. I use tremeal. Uh, I put it on the back of my hand, and I just touch it, and then put it down, and then put the moxa on. It's quicker. And I also, um, it doesn't have a smell. It doesn't stain. Some of these uh, products stain, but the Tropicin or Tremil or one of those things is very uh, easy to use. Some people use coffee, and coffee is a pain poultice, usually traditionally coffee grounds. So they use coffee on the water, on a little bit on the skin, then put the mox on. Interesting. We, I think everybody here is learning a lot tonight. Um, let's see, next question. Have you ever used the Premio 10 electric moxa warmer? And if you have, can you speak to it at all? I have not. The only time I got electric matzo was in Japan with my buddy and I, and I just said to the acupuncturist, I said, yeah, we were walking all day long. We we're hiking in the mountains. And he goes, you need denki matzo on, on your feet. And he, they just, he used it because, well, actually he was blind. So his sister used it and she didn't like the smell of matzo. So they used electric moxa and it looked like a glue and they stuck on the bottoms of her feet till we screamed itai, which meant it hurts. <laughs> and, and then I learned to say itai way before um, I needed to. And, but I forgot to tell my friend, he's still mad at me to this day, but uh, <laughs> very Japanese. <laughs> that is funny. Well, for Henry had asked, about the Premio 10, I won't go into a lot of length on it, but the thought process is, is that the French company that made it Cetatelic has mimicked the effect of the heat that the Quincy and Moxa gives off. So then that is what the device is heating up to, and it goes through the whole arc of it. 
it stays on for about 15 minutes and you can either directly to the skin with the concentration tip on it or you can take that off and expose the heating element and then you would do it indirectly by not touching the skin. Um, it's a really great product and if you ever see us at a conference in the future, if those ever happen again, um, we always bring one and have one to demo. So feel free to stop by and check it out. Um, let's get on to another question. Um, how long do you keep the Ibuki Moxa on after it finished burning? finishes burning? Oh, um... I often just put the next one on uh, if I'm doing more than one. Um, but usually when it's down, I'm paying attention if the patient, if it gets too warm at the end. Usually don't have that problem with soft, but sometimes the regular you do. And the only person I've really burned with them is me. <laughs> and it was uh, using the regular and it was just a mild little thing. So I was kind of surprised at that. Um, but uh, that's why I just let them feel it a little bit. My pandemic roommate, I taught him how to do it, and he's like boxing himself all over the place. It's very annoying. He's got very good at it, and now he's giving himself his own treatments. And and uh, no, he's not an acupuncturist. <laughs> he feels a chi point on his legs, and he'll do one on each side. He's he's a scientist, so he's having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> that does sound like a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, um, you mentioned burning moxa for mosquito bites or fire ants. Would you do it right on top of the bite or around them? Right on top. Yeah, especially if you just get it, you put the cone moxa on there, it works like a charm. It gets all the heat right out of there, especially fire ants. If you ever stepped barefoot on a fire ant, you know, you know what I mean. It, uh, get, it just knocks it right out. It's just beautiful. All right, and then have you ever used products like a lion warmer with moxa? And if you have, would you find it helpful for things like meniscus or tendon issues? I have, but it's been a long time. I'm getting lazy in my old days. So I am more prone to um, do a direct, kind, like OQ there, the thread moxa or, or cone moxa, uh, but the, Lion warmers can be pretty cool, and I know some people are using them with lymph drainage techniques, and they put a sheet over the person and then run the lion uh, warmer type of thing for it, and for they're kind of com com combining the lymph drainage technique with that. So I'm sure somebody's got a class in that somewhere sometime. All right, and I just want to check in with you. How are you doing on time? Because we we just keep getting more and more questions. They are coming in fast and furious. Oh, I got some more time if you do. I absolutely do. Uh, let's keep going then. Uh, do you have any suggested points for constipation, which I think we also talked about at one point? Uh, triple burner six is a good point for that. And I usually do, I feel along the uh, colon ascending and descending colon. So particularly the descending colon, uh, stomach, you know, 25, 26, 27, 28. If you find some heavy points, I'll put a, you can put a needle and mox in there, particularly if it's a uh, cold type of uh, related constipation. All right. Um, do you have an opinion of Junji Mizutani's bamboo tube moxibustion? Oh, you know, I love Junji. He's a great teacher. I like him a lot. Um, thank God for him and Najom. They translate a lot of the stuff. Him and Stephen Brown, they translate a lot of the stuff. And all those guys up there for, and if, join Najom, N-A-J-O-M. And I think it's Najom.ca and get their publication. There's just real gems in there. So, yeah. I don't know how to do it. I've read the books. I'm a little too lazy at this point to do it, so. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any opinions on liquid moxa usage? Uh, I don't use it much because it stains, and then so I don't use it too much, uh, very little. I've, I've messed with some of them, and using it as the base and then putting mox on does have a stronger effect, but I just had problems with staining clothes, staining my clothes, things like that, so. Those sound like, you know, fair things to not love. Yeah. Um, right. Next one is where best to moxa for weak or failing kidneys? I've had, uh, you know, 
What you think, kidney three, UB23? I've had some people with those issues, and those points work like a charm. But basically, anything where you find if they are um, in the prone position, you see holes in their, you know, down the spine, like wrinkles or anything like that, is to strengthen them, have them pop up. So definitely just what you would think basic theory, kidney three, REN three, um, back shoe points, things like that. Right, uh, next question. Can moxa be used to induce labor when appropriate? Oh, good question. <laughs> I've never used it. I've used, um, uh, when I induce, and we're not supposed to use that word, I've, I've used a lot of uh, Claudius Sidibus work, which is e-stim on the Bali out points and things like that. So I haven't ever tried moxa for any of that. All right, and then speaking of trying to heal the scar, do you put the moxa on the top of the scar or around it? Oh, it depends. So it depends on the scar. I should really put a class together on scars. Is um, it depends on what it looks like. If there, if it's not healing right, then I'm usually on the side. Usually you'll find a spot, and, you, and if you go on the scar, sometimes you can even feel a little vapor coming up. And they call that manual thermal diagnosis. And they use it in other medicines, Western medicine, osteopathic, and things like that. But you can actually feel something going on there. And that's where I put the moxicone. And basically, you want the scar to look healthier. And if one area is too tight, you could put a little needle in, loosen it. And it really is kind of a whole art unto itself to do it. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't really mess them up with the... Uh, just a couple cone moxas just to get the chi going. All right, and then would you do pure moxa for post C-section or do you do a combination of needle and moxa? Where would you apply them? I, I would use cone moxa and I would do it along this, uh, not on the scar, but on the uh, above it and below it, I can. You're just warming the area or you're just putting chi into the area. Okay, and then do you, or what kind of moxa do you use on babies? And is moxa recommended in Japan for children that young? Uh, some, but not much. And the, if you're using the buki, you're using the soft for uh, for kids. And uh, I've never done it on babies. The youngest I've done is you know probably six or seven years old or something like that. You don't need a lot. But there are styles in Japan where they do moxa on, on little kids. It's more cultural that way and things like that. And most of the kids have been like one cone on REN6 or REN12 or uh, UB23 for bedwetters. Uh, that works really great. I mean, just like two treatments and their bedwetting is gone. And also REN3 for bedwetting. That works real well. Uh, I had a, uh, a boy with uh, uh, anemia, um, sickle cell anemia, and of course we can't fix that, but we got his body, you know, working in the upper ranges where he went from lethargic, no energy to good energy, you know, for that condition. You know, he wasn't going to run track or anything, but uh, his numbers all went up. This is great for viral loads with HIV patients, for any blood thing. If you do moxa, the sooner you do it, and it's cumulative. You know, each time you do it, you keep doing it, it gets stronger and stronger. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. All right, we're getting close. We only have a few more questions left. Um, any recommendations for osteo, I'm sorry, osteoarthritis of the fingers and hands? So there's a genetic component to that, and you're, what I usually see when it's getting really bad on the stage is you're just getting more function out of it, more movement, uh, easier. Some, you know, the fingers are not going to transform to 20 years ago, but sometimes you'll get, uh, they're just not less achy in the morning and things like that. Uh, I also use, like, there's uh, um, herbal foot soaks, but I use them for the hands. So uh, just the same soaks you would use for herbal foot soaks, mugwort. Um, there's mugwort soaks. You can have them put their hands in, and that's really effective. 
All right. You mentioned the middle of the heel point for brain tumors. Is there any research on moxa being effective effective in the treatment of brain tumors? Uh, no. That that's it's one of the microsystems that or uh, um, uh, what do you call it? You see the whole body in one part. So you know what I'm saying. So uh, the use it. You see it in some of the uh, balance systems and things like that. And I don't know the chicken and egg who had it first, or it's just an idea that everyone had or, you know, floated around, but uh, they use needling in the heel for, and I've only heard anecdotal things from other acupuncturists, um, but uh, some people were doing moxa in the area. I'm very hesitant to do needles in the bottoms of the feet. I'll just do a lot of moxa if I have to. All right, and then we did have a late person who attended, and just to let you know, we are sharing the recording. You will get an email five minutes after we end with the link to the recording and link to the slides. Um, next question, burn time per Ibuki. When you do a treatment on, say, stomach 36, do you only burn one of the moxas, or is five in a row considered the treatment? Um, with, yeah, I do one. I do one or two at most for the abuki, but some people will do multiple ones. I always err on the side of um, less is better. That's what I do. All right, and then can you recommend an air cleaner? Is it sufficient without open windows? Yeah, that's a good question. I know some people will build something into their office to bring all the air out. I was just using a simple HEPA filter and that has the blue light that kill the viruses and it has an ionizer but i wouldn't i only turn the ionizer on for five minutes or less to help clear out the smell and then i turn it off because it can irritate you but yeah i um yeah i just had you know i'm in florida and i'm like a few blocks from the beach so i could just open the window so <laughs> sorry <laughs> and i did that on purpose i i you know did that on purpose but i you know I realize some people, you know, are in closed buildings and things like that and stuff like that. All right, let's do just a couple more here. Um, is there a book that you recommend for further study on Moxa? Oh, there's a, I can't think of any right now. I, I, I like Lorraine Wilcox's book. I read that way back. And then uh, Paul, what's his name? Came out with another good book. That was a nice one. I read that, it was about the bamboo Moxa and things and junji has a lot of stuff out there that's some good stuff too it's all i can think of off the top of my head all righty and then let's just do one more uh do you have any good point suggestions for appendicitis uh ER. <laughs> <laughs> all right good advice um all right because that was so easy let's just do one more um do you have any suggestions on mox boxes Oh, um, about appendicitis, there are some points below, like the stomach 36, gallbladder 34, you find the most tender spot along there um, for appendicitis. But, you know, if they got fever, history, constipation, rebound tenderness, and a lot of pain, they really need to go to the to the ER for sure. That's a life-threatening thing. But, um, and let's see. Oh, uh, so uh, moxa boxes, you know, I made my own i took tin can put holes in them and then put a sock around them and you burn the moxa and there's an old thing about during doyo which is the change of seasons and i started doing this isn't japanese and chinese traditions to burn moxa on uh, the ren points uh, lower like ren six you know ren four whatever needs it and at the change of seasons and i found in the fall particularly this time of year is when the weather starts to change, it boosts everything and it does work. My patients, when I started doing that, had uh, I have no verifiable evidence other than anecdotal, but I my patients got a lot less colds. I, I really noticed it and I started doing it myself too. So moxie boxes are great for that. Uh, I made my own. I'm not quite sure what's out there to be honest. All righty. Well, I want to thank you so much for all of your time and giving this wonderful presentation and taking all of the time to go through these incredible questions. Um, thank you to everybody who attended tonight. We are so happy to be here tonight. 
Um, Cameron, is there anything you'd like to say to the group before we head out for the evening? Well, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some great tips. You can go use them in your clinic tomorrow and just uh, help everyone heal. Alrighty. Well, everybody, please check your email. You'll be getting an email in about five minutes. There'll be a link to Cameron's website where you can some of his online courses. Again, he's also speaking as part of a panel during the 2020 Pacific Symposium, which is happening very shortly. Um, we have a webinar happening next week on Tuesday, and it is Quarantine Schmorantine, How I Thrived When COVID Closed My Doors. It is going to be really fun and just, you know, hearing some upbeat story on how they tackled the pandemic. So thank you to everyone who attended tonight. Check your email five minutes after for the link and for the slides. Also, Prime Deals is happening at Lhasa OMS right now. So we are offering 15% off all orders plus free shipping on orders over $50. And that's going to be running from today until the 23rd. Um, also, um, Moxa is on sale for the entire month. So we will have Moxa on sale until the 31st of October. So everyone have a great night. Hope to see you next week. And thank you, Dr. Bishop, for an amazing presentation. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.